Hey friends, I um, <clears throat> wanted to continue going on in this story of Jonah. So he had received the word of God, didn't didn't want to do God's will. He thought he could run from the presence of God and found himself uh, falling into the depths of the sea and God creates uh, a fish to swallow him up. And in his prayer of repentance, uh, he ends up, you know, spit up on the shore. Uh, and then we come to um, chapter number three. Uh, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it if the message that I tell you. Uh, so Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days journey in breadth. And Jonah began to go into the city going a day's journey. And he called out, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's a pretty simple message. <laughs> um, he goes in and he just tells them, uh, they're, they're going to be overthrown in 40 days. Now look at the response. Well, a couple of things first. Do you see how God loves Jonah and gives him another and another chance? A lot of prophets in the land he could have chosen, could have given up on them, could have dismissed them. But he calls them, and this time, Noah receives the word of God for these people. And he goes into the city and he proclaims God's message. Now, the Ninevites were known historically to be an evil, uh, violent people. Uh, the Jews hated them. They hated the Jews. And Jonah just didn't want to give them a chance at repentance. And yet he, he gives them the message. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word reached the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne. He removed his robe. Um, he covered himself. Uh, with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Now, all of these were uh, his uh, symbols of uh, repentance and mourning uh, in that time. And he issued a proclamation and he published it through Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let men and beasts be covered with sackcloth and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. So here these people are, the Ninevites, they were idolaters, and yet they had a keen awareness of the one true God. Uh, they hear Nineveh's message from God, they recognize their evil and their violence, and they repent. What, what is repentance? Uh, repentance is simply coming in uh, and agreeing with God about what he says. And uh, it's a change of direction, primarily. So they were living uh, violent and evil lives, and they hear the message of God, and they understand that uh, there is a perishing that is coming uh, that will lead to their destruction, and they repent. They stop their evil, they stop their violence, and they show evidence of it from the most noble, the king and his, his leaders, to the very animals of the field. And they put on sackcloth and they fast 
and they understand something about the one true God. He, he says that, that he may return and relent from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. I think they understood they deserved to perish. They were not under the illusion somehow that they were good. And so, as I say often, the gospel is always good news for bad people and bad news for good people. And, and by that, I simply mean, like, if you know that you have sin and evil, and uh, well, it's, it, it brings you to the realization, I need a savior. And they called out mightily to God, none of their idols or their self-serving. But look at the result. And when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he said he would do to them, and he did not do it. We somehow uh, isolate ourselves and we think, well, Israel as the people of God are the only people that God cares about. Well, that's never true. God cares about all of humanity. He sees their evil and he has to deal with it most certainly. But he has a heart of love for the God of the Old Testament is revealed in the Son. He shows us that God is love and that there is no people, no sinner, that he doesn't desire to come to repentance to know what it is to be forgiven and in relationship with him. Well, you think about it and, and see that you too are that one that God has chosen to make his appeal through. And it might very well be to a people group, a person that you don't even like. Are you going to run from that calling or will you go in and proclaim? Because there's someone that God is going to bring into your life, even today, this week, that needs to know God's great love for them. And I hope you will search out for just one, just one every week, even if it's your enemy, even if it's someone who's hurt you even if it's someone you don't like. And let God make his loving appeal through you. I love you, and I hope you have a great day.